The Duffer Brothers just announced the first Stranger Things spin-off television show. Welcome back to the world of Stranger Things. I am so very excited to finally tell you guys that they have officially announced the first Stranger Things spin-off series, which is going to be animated. Holy cow, I cannot believe that they did not do this sooner. They've been giving us so much to look forward to recently. Not too long ago, they also announced the spin-off live play that will be starting later this fall in London. Season 5 is starting filming soon, and now the announcement for an animated Stranger Things show? I I am so excited. With Stranger Things being so big and being such a groundbreaking show, it takes them ages in between seasons to renegotiate contracts and up themselves with each season. When a new season drops, it's so exciting, so much content in one week, and then after one or two months, the hype dies down and then it just feels like radio silence for two years until the next season. And with season five, it might be three years. I'm worried we might not see it until 2025, which feels so far away right now. So having two new spinoffs within a month, or two be announced is so nice. They've teased what they're planning on making this show like and it sounds really exciting. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Michael J and this channel is the only place in the Upside Down where you can catch a break from Demogorgons trying to eat your brains. So stop by and subscribe so your brains don't get eaten. We've got more fun Stranger Things videos coming out soon you're not going to want to miss so make sure you're subscribed. Now honestly, I can't believe it's taking them this long to announce a spin-off series for such a successful show like this. I feel like anyone else by now would be pumping out tie-in shows left and right creating a whole universe and trying to milk it for as much as they can. It's really interesting because with Stranger Things spinoffs it seems like they're going to be trying to tell individual stories that are all separated from each other but still in the same universe. Which is interesting. If you look at the Star Wars Disney universe they made Mandalorian season 1 which was crazy popular and then by season 2 the next year they introduced three new characters that each were supposed to get their own spinoff shows and out of those three two of them actually got made with more coming soon, but they're using all these independent shows to tie into each other to create a larger story branching across this universe they're creating. Essentially, this allows more time for the story and universe to grow, ultimately working its way towards a final showdown where everyone in their own shows comes together to defeat the giant threat. Star Wars is in the middle of that right now, but look at the Marvel Universe. They introduced all the Avengers in their own movies across 11 years, and then continued to tie them all together up until the giant climax of Thanos in Infinity War and Endgame. If we're comparing this to Stranger Things, it would have started around season 2. If you remember, I feel like when they introduced Callie, Eleven's sister, another of Brenner's MK Ultra test subjects, I kind of felt like they were almost hoping for her to be more happily accepted so they could possibly do a spin-off following her on her own story. They could have done the same thing they did with Eleven's story, but with Callie. But no, every time this episode comes on, I end up zoning out and going on my phone to play Raid Shadow Legends or something. Which is perfect, because they are actually the sponsors for this video. And just like Stranger Things, Raid Shadow Legends is getting their own animated limited series as well. Yup, that's right. Raid Call of the Arbiter is out now. Episode 1 just released a few days ago in the app, and each Thursday they're releasing a brand new episode. This is amazing for Raid. This series adds so much depth to Raid and the champions and the stories that live in this world. The animation for the show is amazing. I can't wait to see what other stories and characters they build on with this series. They've also added a bunch of new character bios to read from the show, as well as for some of the fan favorite characters. And right now, everybody playing Raid has the chance to get the legendary champion Artok, one of the five new characters from the show, for free just by logging into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, go use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get some insane bonuses. We're talking an epic champion Knight Errant for free, along with some amazing other perks. If you're ready to experience this world in all of its glory, go down and click the link in the description to join me and everyone else in this amazing fantasy world. Thanks to Raid for supporting the channel, and thanks to you guys for checking out Raid. Now, where were we? Oh, right. Yeah, so whenever Callie is on screen, I just zone out and get distracted. She's just not the best character. But what if she was? Would that have completely changed the world of Stranger Things? They could have realistically done a spin-off show for a ton of the other test subjects too, getting new main characters to tell stories about, having them all wind together in crossovers leading up until the end climax battle where they fight the Mind Flare, or learn about number one and they all fight Vecna together, and then that's where everything would end, before moving on to tell new stories about other characters elsewhere in the universe. But unfortunately for them, and also us in the long run, Callie was not accepted well at all. They put her episode 
right after Episode 6's massive cliffhanger. The kids are trapped in a bus fighting off Demogorgons. Meanwhile, at the hospital, everyone thinks they're using Will's connection to the Mind Flare to find the weak spot, so they send in the soldiers only to find out the Mind Flare outsmarted and tricked them and kills all the soldiers. Then we see the horde of Demogorgons heading to the portal on their way to eat Hopper, kill Joyce, Mike, and Will, and then all of a sudden, hold on, wait, let's pause. Now, here's a new character and her band of overly stereotypical misfits that have nothing to do with the current story. The only purpose Callie served for the sake of the plot was to help Eleven rediscover how to actually use her powers. She was Yoda and taught Luke, or Eleven in this case, how to use the Force. Basically, how to channel her emotions to fuel her power. It's pretty cool, but that moment was so small compared to the hour-long episode of Her We Got. They also tried to steal Eleven away from the main plot to hunt down more bad people and scientists and kill them off, but I mean, of course Eleven's not going to leave Hawkins and Hopper for good. They ended up just confirming through the scientists that Brenner is still alive. Find who? Brenner! I can take you to him. Papa is gone. No, he is alive to put a little what if out there only to be forgotten about for five years until they brought him back in season four. They announced he was alive in 2017 in that hated episode, and then they waited five years to follow up on that. I genuinely think that if Callie was accepted better, that the Stranger Things universe would look completely different than it does right now. But I guess we'll never get to see what that would have been like. Now, this new animated spinoff is said to be about its own individual story, not only for this next show, but also for the future live action spinoffs they're working on. I'm sure that they will be great, but I am ever so slightly worried. Kind of how Callie flopped. I mean, I know they're reading all the feedback and that they'll learn from their mistakes with this character, but what if the new characters in the spin-offs flop? In 1978, John Carpenter made the Halloween movie that followed Michael Myers as he terrorized the town of Haddonfield, Indiana, spending all movie stalking and eventually trying to kill Laurie Strode. The movie was such a hit that everyone wanted more and the studio had him make a second movie. Originally, the plan was to just make one, but then he extended the story and tried to tie all the loose ends in the second movie so he could move on from the character in the story. This one did well too, so when he made a third Halloween movie that had absolutely nothing to do with the first two movies, it flopped. Everyone was like, what the heck, where's Michael Myers? Why is this so different? The only mention of him in this movie is on a TV screen for five seconds, referring to the movie coming on TV soon. This movie absolutely flopped, and then Halloween 4 came out, and boom, Michael Myers is back. Originally, Originally, the creator, Carpenter, wanted each movie to be its own individual scary story that all takes place in the same universe but are each about their own characters and stories. But after the first flop, they made the next 10 Halloween movies all following the same Michael Myers character. All of the future Stranger Things spin-offs at the moment seem to be having their own individual characters and stories, so I guess we're just going to have to hang in there and wish for the best. I trust the Duffer Brothers, I'm just a little nervous slash excited for the new shows. I want this franchise to live on for a long time. They said in an interview that this new animated series is going to be structured differently. They're trying to get this one to feel like those early morning cartoons in the 80s they grew up on, which is so cool. I love the idea of this. They said that they've always dreamed of making an animated Stranger Things show in the vein of the Saturday morning cartoons that they loved. The Duffer Brothers production studio Upside Down Pictures is producing the show alongside Eric Robles with Flying Park Productions. They did Marvel's What If series on Disney+, Plus, which has a very unique animation animation style. They also did Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur show, which again is a very unique style, but they also did a bunch of 3D animated stuff like their wolf movies and some B ones as well. But honestly, I think the coolest animation style that they've done recently that I think aligns the closest with the Duffer's vision of Saturday morning cartoons is the one they used for their Amazon kids movie, the Lego monkey movie. Morning. Yeah, I was about to take my break, so... I've got a dozen orders that need to go out, so quit slacking and get packing! Yes, father! There's just something about this style that makes it feel like old school cartoons. The art is pretty, the animation looks great. I would not be mad if they made a Stranger Things cartoon with a similar style. I think I'd like this better than the Marvel What If series art style. Now, the Duffer Brothers said they're thrilled with what they've done so far. The scripts and the artwork are looking incredible. 
I'm not sure when they're going to announce the first details about the show, but I'm excited. I'm just curious how much they're going to structure it like an old 80s cartoon. I feel like this is going to break away from their episodic storytelling and this show will let them build a mini ecosystem of characters and locations that they can just tell stories about and have them go out on little adventures, each episode being its own contained mini story. I feel like it'll have to try to maintain the mature audience the show already has though. I don't think they'll switch it up to do a full on kids show. I'm not saying it'll be horror and as gory as the show is now, but I don't think it will be too childish for us to enjoy as well. I wonder if they're even planning on keeping some of the show's main elements in the spin-offs. I wonder if they'll keep the kids with superpowers theme. I wonder if there'll be another mad scientist trying to produce and replicate the psychic children, or if they're going to show more of a military organization trying to weaponize them. They teased this with the Russians capturing the Demogorgons in the end credits of season 3, but honestly, it kind of just disappeared after that. They had the Demogorgons being kept in the Russian Gulag in 4, but I wonder how large of a role they'll play in season 5. We already have so many loose ends they need to tie up before ending the entire show, and choosing who they'll kill off, and building up how they'll kill off Vecna. Personally, I would love to see them exploring weaponizing the psychic kids as well as the monsters from the Upside Down in the new show. I think an 80s style cartoon would be perfect to do that. I think if they wanted to play with this and wanted to start to explore it in this series, that would be awesome. I'm really hoping this lets them tell crazy stories with each new episode that they might not feel like rushing through in the live action show. I really hope that they also have a great solid main cast of characters that we'll fall in love with. It'll be hard to beat the original cast because they've set the bar so high, but I'm hoping they'll at least come close. Now, if they do choose in the future to go back and fill in the gaps in the main show with spin-offs or animated shows, I would not be mad at all. I would love an MK Ultra show following young Brenner getting into testing on people starting with the college moms like Terry Ives and possibly even Henry Creel's mom and then him getting into bringing Henry Creel in and then his second kid and the third and so on. I would love that. They could introduce a couple new test subjects each season and it could go for a couple seasons. They could do an episodic based adventure series with Steve and Dustin going on adventures together. They could do a mystery Nancy Drew type series with Nancy and Steve going around Hawkins solving mysteries and looking into minor paranormal happenings. There's just so many cool gaps they could fill in. The biggest question is what can we expect if they choose to go with a new location, with new characters, a new story, and a new threat? Because this entire world was built around Eleven pushing Henry into a void that turned into the Upside Down where he made the Mind Flare. I feel like it would be hard to build the new series around any threat that wasn't some generic upside down monster like a Demogorgon or a new mutant variation we haven't seen yet, or maybe a crazy mad scientist, because having Henry Creel or the Mind Flare off doing side quests being the villain of other shows would feel a little weird. It would take away from them being the main villains of the main show. Even if the show was set in between the massacre of Hawkins and season 4 when Henry returns, it still would be too weird. Henry's whole thing is that ever since he got to the Upside Down, he's been trying to figure out a way to get back to the real world to get revenge on Eleven. Season 5 should be the conclusion of Vecna and possibly the Mind Flare, so that rules them out for the future spin-offs. But there's no other Vecnas. There may be other monsters, but Henry is why the Upside Down exists, so thinking about possible villains for these new spin-offs is really exciting. Will it be a corrupt politician, a secret commie organization, a mad scientist, or a new monster? Who knows? Another thing I would love to see is more paranormal stories. I figure that's what we'll get, but I think they could include more than the psychic kids and mutilated monsters. Even a D&D themed show would be cool. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of that in the future. But what do you guys think? What should they make these spinoffs about? What would you guys like to see? Comment down below and I'm gonna read through everything after this. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and go watch this other Stranger Things video I made. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.